the blood of people is being spilt in our soils and the fact of the matter is we have spilled more blood in the 20th century than the previous 19 put together and ironically it was the German philosopher Nietzsche who reminded us that since God had died in the 19th century the 20th will become the bloodiest century in history Dr. John R. W. Stott in one of his books makes this comment on civilized society and her problem with morals and civility. He says this, many of the happenings of civilized society would not exist if it were not for human sin. A promise is not enough, we need a contract. Doors are not enough, we have to lock and bolt them. The payment of fares is not enough. We have to be issued with tickets which are punched, inspected and collected. Law and order are not enough. We need the police to enforce them. All these things and many others to which we have grown accustomed that we have taken them for granted are due to our sin. We cannot trust each other. We need protection from one another. It is a sorry state of affairs. Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, speaking to a hostile university audience that was jeering him, stopped in the middle and in rather non-regal language, said this, and I quote, he said, shut up and grow up. He said, you can destroy freedom as much by abusing it as you can by taking it away. Did you hear me? You can destroy freedom as much by abusing it as you can destroy it by its retraction by making it illegal to be free. That's precisely what man has done. Did you hear this? In an attempt to be reasonable, he has become irrational. In an attempt to deify himself, he has defaced himself. In an attempt to be free, he has made himself a slave. And like Alexander the Great, he has conquered the world around him, but has not yet conquered himself. Science today has given us improved means in order to attain some of our damnable ends. That's not true of all of science. That's not true of all of the means. So do not take that as an extreme. But it is true that many of our technologies have only made us more sophisticated in our evil. And yet we run and run and run and play hide and seek. And we keep telling each other that somewhere around is this utopia and we deny the reality, live in fantasy and say someday we will find this peace that we want on earth. And you look around us from violence in the football fields to violence in aeroplanes to violence in committee meetings to violence on the battles of war. We are still struggling, denying reality, refusing to come to the grips of the fact that God has diagnosed the problem, we are too possessed by ourselves. That's why the Apostle Paul in Romans says, they have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit and malice. They are gossip, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They are senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless. And although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. And the spiritual challenge of the evangelist is to so breathe the Spirit of God into himself, so bathe his mind with the Word of God, so be in tune with the Master creator of this world so bring his life in tune with the Lord Jesus Christ so that he will be a reflector of the Lord so that when he is finished preaching he will know what it means when somebody said this intense is the agony when the eye begins to see when the ear begins to hear when the pulse begins to pound, when the heart begins to throb, listen now, when the soul feels its flesh and when the flesh feels its chains.